Hello and welcome back to the Specky and Paul Talk Detailing Podcast. We are the Nilfisk and Carter of the UK detailing community. This is Season 2, Episode 21, A Chat with Forensic John. My name is Specky McSporran and I'm joined as usual by my good friend, co-host and all-round wonderful bald man, Mr. Paul Dolden. Oh, thank you. It brings a tear to my eye. Welcome. I couldn't just say bald, because that, that would have been wrong, so I had to say wonderful to take the edge off Oh, it. so you didn't actually mean it, then you just, you just chuck it in. Right, fair enough. It's going to be like that, is it? Okay, um, mm, on, with that's the, it. on with the show. With roll. <laughs> we have a brand new sponsor, and this is going to be an ongoing thing. Um, I've decided to start my own company up. I've got sick and tired with all these fly-by-night sponsors, you know, these ones that just don't... They just come in, they go, you know. I mean, some might say some of these are made up. I don't know, but... <laughs> Well, I don't know, because I've tried Googling a few after an episode. I can't find them. It's funny how that works. Oh, you're probably on the wrong web. Um, I've started <laughs> up my own company. Um, it's called Lap Productions. Uh, lazy and pointless, basically. That's what it's short for. Um, it's not what, I, not what I was picturing at all. No, you wouldn't. No. Well, that's a, that's a different story. Uh, so my first mm. invention, I've really took my time over this one. I mean, hours, possibly minutes even. Uh, this is the <laughs> bubble bucket fartomatic. Let me explain. Um, so I've took please. <laughs> I've took the innards from the the well known foam R A team, which is sat next to me amongst the couple of pressure washers I've got, and took the innards Gosh. out. And I thought, you know what, I've got a better use for that. You know that point when you're cleaning your car, and you let's just say for argument's sake, you might have a cheap shampoo, and the shampoo dies in the bucket. You got to, you know how long that walk is from the front of the car to the rear. It's very strenuous, mm. very strenuous. We are lazy, and then you got to mm. refill your bucket with your stubby gun and froth it back up. There's no need. There's no need because this is like a slow cooker. It says you put it on low, you press a button, and it constantly bubbles. You know, a bit like when you're in, when you're in the bath, you have a little accident. You know, hence, <laughs> hence, <laughs> bubble bucket, automatic, perfect. <laughs> I, I self, was so nearly there. <laughs> self bubbling buckets. Honestly, mate, these are these are going to fly off the shelf. This is a new invention. This is from Lap Productions. Lazy and pointless. It, it reminds me. This might sound really posh. We used to have a jacuzzi bath. Um, that's what you. When I was well, that's what up. you called it. It obviously wasn't. It was a genuine jacuzzi bath. And what was funny was you would pour a bubble bath into the bath and then switch it on, and it had two modes. It was either jets or it was bubbles. And if you switched it on to the bubble mode and you already had some bubble bath in the water, then it would just continue to rise and rise and rise to the point where your head would disappear under all these bubbles. I can just imagine that being a thing for these buckets, is that they're just going to keep running and running, and you're going to have this what looks like a an Ice Age... Uh, glacier of of bubbles running down your drive. I'm, I'm not going to lie; it is without it's, it. You know, it has got a few issues. There's a couple of issues. Um, <laughs> we've got, we've got a, a bit of an issue with yeah the, the foaming agents, and it you tend to get a bit of more foam rather than water. But you know, it just cuts down, doesn't it? I mean, we are genuinely lazy people. Why would you want to just keep coming up and filling up your bucket and re-agitating the um, the poor shampoo of choice for that week? Don't use a strong shampoo in this. I, I urge you not. I was going to say, like, yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some shampoos out there. Oh, just now don't do that. that. Would uh, benefit from it. It's like, go, it's like, there's, go, there's, it's like there's... Ghostbusters, Marshmallow Man. It's that all over again. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's like by the windows, door, yeah. up around a doorbell, everything. Yeah, you lose your, we've, you lose we've your had, car. Yeah, we've, we've had some shampoos which are like, you know, the kind of thing you just have to look at them and they generate foam. Exactly. But there's others that you could you could jump in and out of them, you know, like a, a grape stomper and you're still not going to get much foam out of them. So maybe for those kind of products, it could be... A th I'd be very interested to see one of these things in action. I'll, uh, I'll put you down for one, mate. I'll put one to side. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go on. Right. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay, Thank you. I'll do it right now. Lovely. Right, on with the news. Um... I actually don't have a huge amount of news. Oh, I do kind of have a bit of news. I uh, picked up a new car at the weekend. I won't say what it is because it'll be coming up in a, an, a future video. Some people have already guessed it, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, picked up a new car at the weekend. The Fiesta is not gone yet. It needs a couple of things replacing on it before I put it up for sale. But um, 
yes, it, the Fiesta is definitely going and has been replaced with something a little bit less fun, more squishy, comfy, and I'm just worried if it's a bit a bit pensioner. But it's nice. It's a nice car. I've always liked the Austin Maestro. I, I think they're quite nice. <laughs> My father had a Maestro, a Maestro Mayfair, and it was one of his Ooh. favorite cars he's ever owned. It was lovely. Carpet it was silver. Carpet he, bowls all the way with that one. Yeah, it it it. He called it Sylvia. Um, that oh, was his name. Really? And he was he was yeah. It was a D reg. I still remember the reg on it. Nine eight seven. Um, it was a. It was a D five eight seven ASA. Mm. Um, it's probably dead, probably long dead right now. Um, but it was a lovely, lovely car, and the only reason he got rid of it was because it was just starting to rot out from underneath him. Did he? Yeah, have, the engine was great. Did he but, have an AA badge but, on the front? You know, with the chrome surround. Yeah. If there was one, it wasn't one that my father put on himself. It right. would have been something that maybe someone else had um, put on it before. But I don't, I don't remember there being a case. One of my favourite memories of that car was jumping a humpbacked bridge. Uh, in that, the whole family was in it. Now, if I remember correctly, this was actually the first family car we owned as being four in the family, where it actually had rear seat belts, and it's a good thing as well, because. Um, we kept driving over this. It was down in Yorkshire somewhere. We were on holiday to a place called uh, Flamingo Land. And, oh, I know uh, where we're it driving is. There and, I've been there. Yeah, right. So it's near Pickering, um, if you're familiar with uh, that part of Yorkshire. And there was a the road that took you from Pickering to um, to Flamingo Land had this little humpback bridge. And I kept saying to my dad, oh, that would be such a great jump. That would be such a great jump. And I don't know, I was maybe like 10 years old or something. And... My father said yes, and my, my, my mother kept saying no, no chance. And one day he went for it, and yeah, we actually had all all four wheels in the air, and the car came thumping down. I thought the car was going to split in half. I think my little sister maybe smacked her head off of like the side window oh, of the car or something. Those were, those were the days of proper parenting. <laughs> I, that was the way it was done, yeah, honestly. It absolutely. was hilarious. Um, he never ever did anything like that again probably because my mother would have absolutely slaughtered him but um yeah maestro can't believe you came up with that one i've got fond memories of those cars they were uh, very interesting you should go back and look at the old uh, adverts that austin put out for the maestro something else they made it look like it was this new spaceship that had just arrived and then they unveiled it and it's a maestro <laughs> right yeah they weren't the most stylistic of automobiles well mm, but we can talk no. bloody rover metro on the drive i mean blimey that's a, that's hey, a, that's a future classic. Come on. Mm, how about that? Um, any more news you've got, son? Any more? Um, mm, I'm, I'm trying to think. Apart from getting the new car, uh, I've got a video coming out, probably going to be out by the time this podcast goes live, actually, about the uh, the Astra VXR. I know I probably promised promised that in the last episode, actually. And the wonderful um, that. Yeah, that's definitely coming out. So there's that. Um, and also I've got a very, very kind um, offer. Um one of uh, my uh, our subscribers, followers, listeners of the podcast and so on oh, yes. got in touch today and he has something for me that he doesn't need anymore and I will update more when it actually arrives. Uh, but it was an incredibly generous offer. Uh, he did say uh, I was going to offer it to Paul, but mm. I was worried he maybe already had 11 of them. I love how people are jumping on this. They're, they're getting the whole idea of you having 11 teen pressure washers. Which... Which is kind of keep going brings up. me on to my news. Um, yes. Yes, I've got a new pressure washer, everybody. What? <laughs> I hear you cry. Wait, <laughs> stop. Uh, yes. Um, so, Ava, or Ava, however you pronounce it. Uh, James. I always call it Ava, but. Mm, let's go with Ava then. That's like Galen. Got me. Oh, now I've got all my words muddled up. I've, I told you I've got verbal dyslexia. So, James Clinch got in touch <laughs> and. Um, I didn't meet him somewhere really dodgy, like the Sainsbury's car park in Colchester, just by the toll, just by toll gate there, um, to exchange uh, information about this machine. So I actually went to pick it up. Uh, he bought it down personally. Uh, so this is the Smart P60 by Arva. Uh, it's an all-in-one unit with a reel on it, hose reel reinforced. And the fantastic thing about this is it's already sort of kind of upgraded. So you haven't got to run out and buy a new hose for it. It's got like a built-in stubby gun. It's got a nice lance with it, and it's got a, a snow foam bottle um, and some different attachments. So I'm going to be running that for its paces. It's going to be like a first impressions video. Um, and then I'm going to be doing like, a, you know, living with it for like three three months or whatever it is, so I'll cope with that. 
And then, of course, I've got Wicked. some more press, pressure washes to do next year with uh, Ultimate Finish and then back with Ara again. So, yeah, um, like, like I said before, guess what you got for Christmas? That's right, mince <laughs> pies. Yes, yeah. well, I've got it in one. Well done. How did you it's guess? It's a box. It's a box for the pressure washer because you haven't got enough space for all the boxes. <laughs> no, no, I haven't, mate. Uh, and then what else? Uh, oh, yes, I've got... Um, obviously, if you've seen... You would have seen the video by now. The Valet Pro partnership. I've teamed up with Valet Pro. Uh, to do my first paid sponsorship. It is it's not a review. People get very hung up on this. It's a how-to. It's going to be working with those guys. I've done my first yeah, video. Yeah, it's, it's a showcase is what you call yeah, it. Yeah, a showcase. And I really like that video. I enjoyed it. Thank it you. I'm, I'm quite proud of this one. It's, it went down really, really well. I was very sort of dubious about hitting publish because I was worried about hit people, you know, looking at this going, oh, this is, you know, he's just getting paid. He's going to be a free holiday in it or something or, you know, a Montego or something. Um, so yeah, even I'm though re- you're actually going to you're going away to Wales at the end of the week, <laughs> oh, no, I can't believe I'm going away. Um, yes, uh, yes, yeah, so I got copious amounts of Valet Pro. I'm sitting bathing in Valet Pro at the moment. I've got enough Valet Pro to be doing quite a few videos, so yeah, um, that's something that's going to be an up and coming or reoccurring thing. So, Valet Pro can be featured more on the channel, it's not going to be you know predominantly them, and also, well, before we came on air. Both received a cheeky email from uh, Turtle Wax. Yes, um, uh, I they, get to read this yes, properly. But they're um, releasing some new products because it's SEMA at the moment, isn't it? At the moment. SEMA is um, ongoing now because our friend from Detailing World, Matt, is over there at the moment and he's managed to, I can't believe this, he's grabbed an interview with Pan. Has he? Yes, I went... Ah, I, you see, he wasn't happy that we got in there before. No, well, I did a, see, so now he's trying to one-up us. I did a sneaky live with him today on uh, Pimpstagram. And, um, yeah, he I was, saw that. He, you know, he was uh, there name-dropping. God, he, name, he likes a name-drop, doesn't he? Oh, <laughs> he, oh, <laughs> he makes um, me... I just got looking at the email here from, from uh, Turtle Wax. So it looks like if they're doing the same thing as before where we're all going to get sent out some of these things, um, this would be yeah. nice. Um... Yeah, so it says, let's dive into them. What have we got? There's going to be the new Hybrid Solutions Pure Shine Misting Detailer. Interesting, because um, I don't really do much of kind of quick detailers and things like that, turtle wax. No. So it's usually just spray waxes and things like that. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. Coatings. Um, spot Clean Stain and Odor Remover. Yeah. Uh, hybrid Solutions Scratch Repair Kit. Uh, so this is going to have precision polishing abrasives and things like that interesting uh hybrid solutions graphene acrylic trim restorer back with the graphene and acrylics um interesting and then a headlight restoration kit i'm genuinely interested to see what these are going to turn out like because turtle wax don't put out bad products no they don't um they so be genuinely interesting okay. solid performance cool. I, think that's, I think that's all the news isn't it should we um i think that's all the news yeah let's, let's get him on let's get the main man on let's get him on if you guys know much about the detailing industry, you know much about the detailing community, you have very, very likely come across this man's videos. John Delu, also known as Forensic John, welcome to the podcast. Hello, guys. Happy to be here. Hello. Hey. This is it. This is great. Thanks very much for coming along. Um, this has been a very highly requested episode. We have had so many people asking whether we're doing live chats or we're doing we're posting something or we're getting messages we're getting emails we're getting feedback people are telling us about the podcast and they're saying you guys have got to get forensic john on that would just be that that's what they're looking for so this is it this is this we're at, we're answering the call here and uh, we're delighted you, you've come along so for the rare minority of people who don't know about forensic detailing about you and the channel let's go back a little while and you can tell us how long we're going back here when did you get the the detailing bug when did you start getting into this uh, as your kind of first footsteps into it when did i get the detailing bug probably um in my mid 30s i think yeah i'm just how long ago is that well detailing hasn't hasn't <laughs> been around that long uh, I'm 46 mm. now, so I would say probably about 15 years ago, something like that. Um, I remember getting more and more interested in how I looked after my cars. And um, 
you go from being a guy that buys stuff from Halfords to being a guy that discovers this whole detailing community and all these different products online through various, uh, you know, distributors and stuff that you guys know. Yeah. And once you discover that world, it's huge and it suddenly expands detailing from a couple of brands to all these new exciting brands with different products different accessories large buckets <laughs> and um that's probably when it started for me i was um interested in collision repair so a good friend of mine still does it and i helped him out repairing cars and uh, i remember one time he was trying to sell a car and couldn't sell it because it was covered in swirls and i offered to clay it down and polish it for him and i did that for free <laughs> then the next time i spoke to him about four and five days later he'd sold the car to the next guy that come and looked at it and um All right. that probably started my interest in in paint work doing the collision repair with him um the more cars i repaired we were getting panels painted i wanted to learn how to polish properly because back then what i was doing wasn't really the right way of polishing a car it was using a very cheap uh, rotary polisher with a very cheap compound that you can still buy today vm compound uh and the same uh, mop heads if you like that you can buy mm -hmm. from my local factor store that cost four quid a go and I would just blitz the panel with that. And I thought that was uh, how you'd do it. And it's probably about then that I discovered, you know, YouTube, uh, places like Detailing World, uh, Auto Geek. And I went from using that rotary wrong to watching a video on YouTube of Mike Phillips using a 3401 uh, flex machine with a late mm -hmm. country pad. And all I did was just go and buy that machine and the pads he was using um, and different compounds. I used 3M compounds and just did the technique he did of cross hatching instead of just randomly, uh, <laughs> just randomly, randomly blasting the, the panel. panel. <laughs> and that was probably my Moving first there. steps into detailing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's where it started. Way before the channel started. Um, so yeah it was it was through collision repair and a lot of the, a lot of my cars were all kind of repaired write-offs if you go back to the start of the channel the t5 van i had that was a write-off the golf i've still got that you see on the channel that was a write-off the laguna saga yeah, blue m3 that's been there for like ever it has that yeah. Golf. um yeah the laguna saga m3 that was a write-off uh so they're all things i repaired nowadays i don't do that collision repair stuff there's it's just not worth your time really but um yeah. that's how i got into it so then what led you from taking the 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 knowledge and experience from that and then translating it into videos for the general public to consume i think it was discovering the detail in scene and just being blown away that suddenly there was so much more choice and how do you um, kind of pick what you should use from this vast array of options? If you go back to the first few videos, like one of the very first ones was the wash mitt comparison. And that was an example of me suddenly realizing that you haven't just got, um, you know, one wash mitt that you can go and buy from Alfred's. You've got a woolly one, you've got a microfiber one, you've got a noodle one. You've got a sponge pad, you know, you've got all these different ones. You can put them on your hand or you can hold them like a block. So I thought, all right, I'll go and buy them all. And I'll give you my opinion on which one I think is actually the best and what's worth the most, you know, what's the most value. And that yeah. is the first time I started to see some interest in the videos when I did that. Uh, before then no one was interested and no one was watching and i've said before i was about to give up because <laughs> it was just it's interesting though you know you, you you did that at a time when no one else was really making that kind of content 
and that's what made me latch on to your your channel early doors um i've mentioned this many times before your channel was the first detailing related channel that i subscribed to before you know really taking some of my my main footsteps into it i just learned accidentally and thought i need to find out more about this and and searching on youtube led me to your channel and i thought this this guy gets it this guy is is putting products side by side that kind of testing and that's what led me to your channel and thinking that this is what i've got to keep watching because he's he's asking the questions that i'd be asking and he's answering them as well uh, and lots of people i think have, have been in a, a, a similar situation um from that i mean you you said you were close to kind of stopping it what what was the the thing that made you think about stopping and, and what was the thing that made you say no i'm gonna keep going it was just too much losing money you guys okay you you know what it's like with the first year or so you're spending money all the time on all these products so just just to go back to the same example the wash mitt video it's probably three or four hundred quid to buy all that stuff then you've got yeah. your camera your softwares um your time and each time you're doing a video it might it's costing you money rather than making money and i think i've said before after a year of doing it i was about four or five thousand pounds in the red <laughs> and wow. it wasn't sustainable and i was like when the when the novelty of making these videos and having the audience and having the engagement and talking to people which is great but after a year the novelty of that wears off a little bit and the reality of losing money and spending a lot of time doing this kicks in and i my channel for i think over a year or two years was completely um unmonetized i didn't know you could use affiliate links i didn't I don't think I've even monetized on YouTube for for a while, mm. um, and it just yeah lost a fortune. So I I remember saying on the channel I've got to make some changes here, and I started using affiliate links, which was really good. And I think I started the Patreon up as well, which was good. It made a difference. And then after about two or three years of just carrying on doing the same thing, it was making you know between 500 and a grand a month with all those three different things and as it got closer to a grand i thought well you only need two to three grand a month and you can go you could do this full time and then that is when yeah. i started really pushing and really pushing the channel um and yeah also discovering what works and what goes micro viral if you like what what are people really interested in what's going to help grow the channel and i mm. think i was figuring out that the best product stuff was going to be the way to go but it was actually i think the first viral video i did was a detailing video where we were working on that old red suzuki i think auto um and i wasn't even going to bother filming it i was just detailing it for a neighbor for, as a favor and um, I just filmed some little bits of footage and then did some dialogue over the top and published it. Didn't think anything of it. And about three or four days later, there's that huge spike. And you think, hold on, what's going on here? My, my subscriber yeah. numbers are wrong. They've gone up by like a thousand or something like that. And that's your like your first viral video. Um, so I discovered, you know, people love these cars being... Um, transformed with detailing was you know and I started doing a little bit more of that as well um, I think that's when you're I remember that video vividly John it actually exploded and I think that was kind of like the trend and I think the audiences in, in America certainly the YouTubers in America have latched onto that now and that whole detailing disaster thing with, with like the superstars <laughs> now which is like detail of geek you know who's now built this huge great garage you know and, and it is eat, sleep, repeat, isn't it? A lot of these videos do get the same, but you've kind of varied your channel. I mean, I'm the same as Specky. I watched you right from the start, and I have to say, while we're recording, a big thanks to you because you really pushed my channel. I remember you reading my name out, and I got this huge spike um, from that, and a ton of subs. I've got to say thanks to you for doing that because that was, that was really well, kind. Well, I was telling I was telling people to avoid you, Paul. Oh, right. Oh, harsh. <sighs> Well, that's the end of this podcast. Only, Thanks very much for coming along. I'm a <laughs> pressure washer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I, you've been, lots and lots of people have watched you over the years and got huge value of what you're doing. I mean, 
it's different for us because I I've got to say I don't really buy anything. I'm very very lucky. I get sent this stuff to review and use and showcase, and I very rarely top up things apart from probably all purpose cleaner and glass cleaner and things like that. But um, we are very lucky to do what we we do. But I, going back to that video, that little red Suzuki, I remember that kind of like going, wow, that's this is really watchable, and it's a hook, isn't it? Seeing the pink turn to red, you know, seeing the mold and the junk come off a car. And I think that you kind of set a trend there, whereas lots of other channels have just sprung up. Um, and it is a very copied format. That's the only downside to it. And I think you got yeah. in there very early. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I, I still mean, think this, there's, there's... You're, you're spot on, really. People, YouTube is all about discovering what's popular. And if you want to be... If you want to be a huge channel, you've got to find what's popular and then just repeat doing it. Um, and that's great, you know. And if you want to do that, you'll you'll succeed. I've said many times on the channel, <laughs> a bit like um, Arsene Wenger at Arsenal, you know, forensics detailing is a, special, a specialist in failure. So 99% of the stuff we do flops and fails. But... Um, we do try different stuff. We have a go. <laughs> this is the thing, though, that when it comes Definitely. to following trends and you, you're trying to find what's popular, so we've seen it already that sometimes you, you jump on that and you can continue to do that, but it only it only can last for so long yeah. before eventually people start to become sickened of it. They yeah. got they get fed up. It's the same thing over and over. It's the only thing you're changing is the car that you're doing. But it's the same process. It's the same patter that's going on. Oh, look at this thing. Isn't it filthy? Isn't it minging? Yeah. Don't we want to do this about it? Oh, look at the transformation. And the transformation the process is exactly the same. And the only difference is the the pattern of the dirt on the car. But it we've seen it and we we've spoken about this, Paul and I, where this whole disaster detail thing seems to have peaked and is now kind of on the backside sloping downwards where for a long time it was all about the disaster detail but that kind of content is disappearing and it does follow trends how do you measure your trends how do you what what do you have a, a process that you go through or for how for how to find out what's the popular thing right now or do you kind of throw a bunch of them at the wall and see what sticks Mm, I'm pretty terrible with that. I mean, you, you get rewarded for putting the effort in with your production and like making a very fast flowing production on a very popular subject area. So disaster details have been flooded now. There's millions of them all yeah. over YouTube. And if you wind back two years ago, there was probably only... 10 channels doing disaster detail content so if you were doing it you were guaranteed a good amount of views now you've probably Big got numbers. 100 channels that are doing it so yeah. that niche is being overpopulated um but, but you can carry on doing that niche and if you're doing it well you know it's popular people will still watch and but you just might not be mega viral you know so what you can do is try and find new niches within detailing, um, which is very, very hard. And what those niches are, I don't know, but they have to come from something other than watching other people on YouTube. If you just watch what other people are doing and look for viral stuff, you'll succeed to a certain point, but you'll always be one step behind. Um, mm. And you miss out on the most important thing as well, which is following what you enjoy um so i try not to do too much of anything and mix it up a little bit i've said many times on the channel if the moment you hate doing youtube and it becomes a chore it becomes tiring and you just think oh i've got to go and film that's the time to give yeah. up you've got to really stay passionate stay passionate to the product side the industry side the actual detailing cars you've got to maintain that passion for cars go to car shows meet people with other cars and keep the the overall passion going and see what see where that takes the content um that's yeah. the way on, to do it on the on the subject of cars john i have to apologize to you uh for missing you at goodwood um gutted oh, yeah. i didn't see because you were at players classics and, and i yeah. missed you 
Well, I'll get you. Um, I think you. Yeah, I think you must have been on the paddock side. We were on the other side watching the the blokes do donuts and um, <laughs> go and hoon up in a track. But that was a really good show. And there's something I wanted to ask you because I've always watched you and and seen what you've been doing, and you know I always pick up on your videos when when new products come out. Um, and obviously we get flooded with products, and it it can almost be like a self diluting process. And I've just gone back to the the how tos. And I think there's, uh, it's kind of been lost because, like you just said, we are, we're always watching somebody do like a really mucky vehicle that's been sat in a barn, and you kind of think, is this staged? You know, I don't know. Just to get, I got a good counts. one of those coming, though, Paul. Have you? Right, I'll, re I'll retract that statement. I can't wait for that. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm due one. I, I haven't done one of these for like uh, yeah. years, I think. Yeah, but I, I mean, <laughs> I'm going back to the how tos, and I've watched you for the how-tos you know we're all a lot of us are probably the people listening today um will probably you know agree with me we watched you to think oh that's how you do it and we've all, we're all learning every day's a school day and i'm getting people watch me do it and i'm you know i'm quite proud of that do you think we should go yeah. back to that now be to, to reignite that passion do you think it's going to go full circle possibly people always want to know how to machine polish a car that there's a point where you go from a car enthusiast that likes washing his car to a car enthusiastic that's going to want to detail his car and bridging the gap is learning how to machine polish now you can really take machine polishing to completely different levels you can do a very fast job to an average kind of standard and make your car look good in a short space of time and that could be what 99% of the populations want. But detailing really is about spending a ridiculous amount of time sometimes <laughs> to just get that yeah. extra 1%. Mm. And I mean, the, some of the details that I see where guys are spending like, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 hours polishing, that is detailing. That's the difference. Because a detailer will know you can polish a car very quickly but to finish it out to a really high standard you've got to go again and really spend that time and 99 percent of people won't be able to tell the difference in a quick cut and finish and a really long lengthy polish but the detailer yeah. will know <laughs> so yeah you could you could go down the how how to route the problem is it's it's been done so many times how to clay a car how to wash a car safely how to machine polish a car again all these niches are full now um so yeah in terms of coming into youtube now and trying to succeed it's going to be tough and you're probably going to be forced down the road of of doing the viral content and all that disaster detail stuff because it's still what's the most popular at the moment yeah you've you've really um kind of taken a, a hold of and a, a really a kind of interest in the youtube shorts i've noticed that um you've been putting out quite a lot of shorts now I, it's not really my kind of content uh i know paul i've dabbled with it paul's dabbled with it but you've really kind of taken that on board um and it seems to be working because you get a ridiculous amount of views on those shorts and mm, you don't get any word money, on though. the horizon <laughs> well, this is this is what I was going to say. Is the right. word on the horizon from YouTube is that these shorts will soon be monetized. January is, yeah. Is this going to be the the future of detailing at the moment? Because, or as far as the content at least is concerned, because uh, I have noticed that obviously a platform like TikTok, for example, is all about the short form content. It's all about the uh, instant gratification. Do you see that being a large part of your content for the future or is it just going to continue to be supplementary as we move into this monetization of short form content? Yeah, it's a good question. So the key thing is, I mean, shorts is monetized at the moment, but the return on on the views is just ridiculous. You could you could have yeah. a video that does five million views and make less than five pounds revenue. You might get a bonus like a hundred dollar um youtube fund pot that they seem to give out if you do loads of views um but at the moment from a monetary point of view 
YouTube shorts are absolutely pointless. In January, like Paul said, they're going to change that so that they, they have more advertising on them and you'll get an increased revenue share from that advertising. Mm -hmm. But I still don't know how effective they're going to be. So at the moment, I use them as a tool, a sort of fishing tool almost to just put out shorts if i'm doing anything to do with detailing uh i'll just try and capture it on my phone and put a short out or if it's nothing to do with mm -hmm. detailing i might be driving my car around a track you know film it and just chuck it on shorts i said when they brought shorts out i was gonna be trying anything and everything on there and investing in it i did a video on the backup channel that what i think are shorts um so that's it really yeah i think you should look at it as a as something that you need to try um and yeah that's it <laughs> yeah. okay I, I, all right well i'll find i'll do it i'll try it yeah more. i mean i dabbled in it because i've strangely enough i got a new pressure watch it was very unusual for me obviously and i thought i'd just try it out as a first look and it got like five thousand views in like an evening i'm thinking wow for like three little clips now, when I shoot my videos, I'll have an average of 96 to 100 odd clips using a, a couple of cameras, and they'd take a good like day to edit. And I, 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 I think I kind of get short, but I, from someone who's a, a creator, I don't because I spend a lot of time editing and, and getting nailing the camera angles and doing all that sort of stuff. Because I really enjoy that aspect of doing detailing videos. I mean, I don't just like doing cars; I like filming. So for me, they're a bit sort of a bit of a kick in the nuts because they're, yeah. mm. they're, you know, they're not that creative. And I think it's like low effort, isn't it? Yeah, it is minimum effort. And, uh, you know, and if you think back in the day, John, when you were, you first started, you, you know, the length of time and you went, to, we're in a different position. I mean, I did buy stuff in the beginning, but then I just got into this thing of people sending me stuff through Instagram and emails. And I got so overrun with products. There was no need for me to buy stuff except I wanted a new machine polisher and I was just churning out this, you know, this content. And even I got to admit at one point I was going to give up because it was just getting a bit too much. There was a new brand every other week. And I think you'd mentioned it in videos before that, you know, it is look like it's a diluting process. We've, I think we're going full circle because I don't know about you, but we've seen a lot of brands disappear over in the last six months. And I think that oh, that's yeah. kind of changed. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask was, how do you think the industry's changed? And especially for you as a creator, how do you think it's really changed? Has it changed for the better? Has it changed the industry? Well, it's continued to grow. It it's less niche now. So many people are aware of detailing, and they go to YouTube still for um, information on detailing. That's that's improved that's that's increased in popularity um so the industry's bigger we still have um, a, a complete saturation of of detailing brands there in short there's probably way too many brands for the market but that doesn't mean you shouldn't start a brand it, it just means you have to figure out a way of rising above all the other competition um so i as a youtube creator i want to see new brands coming out doing cool things and then when they do cool things i want to try their products and get them on the channel and stuff like that that's gone i've never seen it so flat as it is at the moment it's incredibly flat there's there's mm -hmm. very little product innovation as far as i'm concerned going on at the moment I think the accessories. Sections. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've got like the rim mats. I mean, this guy came, you know, he drove down, he put his life savings into it, you know, and I didn't charge him for a video or anything. I was just amazed he bought this, you know, this product out. And a few of the comments were like, oh, you can just use plywood to put under your wheels or drive it up on blocks. And I was like, fair comment. But these are like made for mobile validators and mobile detailers. And I thought, what a clever invention. I, I jumped all over it and it, it did okay, but it, didn't do the numbers I wanted it to do because I really wanted the guy to succeed, you know. And I put a link on the channel, but I, I kind of get where you're coming from. And I think 
Specky's done accessory videos. I've done them, and I've gone the whole accessory route because I just think there's a bit more value in it rather than doing countless bottles of, of products. I mean, yes, I do do them, but I kind of get where you're coming from. It's ninety percent yeah. application, ten percent products, isn't it? At the end of the day, yeah, we need accessory innovation is really good. The problem people have got is if they come up with anything that's good, it's going to get copied instantly. <laughs> And it's going to get made for cheaper and sold for cheaper. And then the whole thing is was a waste of time. Or they might get six months of, of good business before um, it's game over. Uh, so, yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, but chemical innovation seems really slow at the moment. I haven't seen a really interesting product, you know, that's unique for, for a fair old amount of time. I think the graphene kind of bubble... It hasn't burst, but it's not as it doesn't have the wow factor now. It will roll out into other brands, and they'll they'll do graphene lines and stuff. But I think even the mass markets sort of sees beyond that now. So yeah, um, I, did, I think it did, it didn't really go the way we all expected it to go. We all saw saw it coming in, thinking this is ceramic all over again you know it's going to be a, a new revolution and it turned out to be maybe just not quite the same way but talking about brands was there any point in your time um through your experience with youtube and with all these different brands where you thought to yourself you know what i i could release the forensic detailing lineup <laughs> of products did you ever consider that as a thing were you ever approached for anything like that well when I started the channel, one of the first things I did was start making waxes. So I always wanted to make my own forensics that, yeah. formula. <laughs> Wax. I used to like those. I used to, I used to love yeah, they them. Were, I loved it. I was just, it was an addiction, like making the wax. And I just, I loved doing it. And I made some other products uh, and I tried making a few things. But the problem is, I'd be like a hundred years behind some of these companies <laughs> and whatever i was coming up with you know it was just going to be mickey mouse compared to what they could do um and i didn't but the, the main reason i never ever want to do that um is because i don't feel if i've got a forensic detailing brand i should really have content out there that's criticizing other brands because um i'm in i'm in the game you know and yeah, that's not you, you fair kind of is it? Up, but you, you are yeah you end up being a, being a target absolutely I, I think the kind of audience that you have and the reach that you have there are going to be people who would i think definitely back you if you were to say look i want to start my own lineup of products and things people would back you simply because you have been able to provide so much information over the years to help people i totally understand that it's a it's a hell of a prospect because i i don't think i would ever want to do it because there's it's not just like a one and done situation it's constant innovation it's constant work on it but i definitely think if you had decided to go and release your own line of products you would have you would have nailed a whole bunch of sales yeah the problem is you you can end up killing your channel though can't you because you well yes that's the, it it's not for everybody the temptation is you could do a video comparing 10 detail sprays or you could do a video using your detail spray that will generate you sell you 200 bottles you're going to want to try and make money as an as a priority because you've got all these products um and i think it's just going to kill your channel um but like yeah. i say i've got so much content that, that criticizes products or compares them and puts one above the other suddenly if i'm selling products some company could say well this guy sells detailing products but he's also got content that's um putting other products above and below others and there could yeah. be a conflict of interest i think i don't know well, no i i definitely think that's a case there because i i would worry that you're if you're a reviewer and you make your own products and suddenly you don't have the impartiality that you perhaps once did it's a difficult yeah, one. This yeah, is, you, yeah, yeah. I, I, it would just be very difficult, I think, for me. But don't quote me on that. You know, a couple of years time. <laughs> Hello. 
Yeah, never say never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forensic no, ceramic I mean, wax coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, another big reason, guys, is who is just too much. I want like to do the channel and, and have fun. And you imagine if you got to run a business and like you've got a you've got to handle all those orders and you know people complaints and all that. I just don't like the idea of running a business selling. Um, products i just think it'd be uh so stressful yeah i think it's yeah. it, for guys like larry you know um the drive clean channel and he's got his his brand and it's obviously heavily featured in every video but then the guy's cracking some serious numbers and you know yeah. we love him for it and the format is pretty much the same they get some amazing cars in it just so happens yeah. he's using his own brand and that that kind of works you know and i'll tell you what really have that is a, a master class in how to do it properly because he doesn't push the product too much. It's all about the content. Yeah. And um, the yeah. content's brilliant. And you don't need to push the product if the content's brilliant. This is my, my approach because obviously I've just start, started working with Valet Pro and this partnership. And I've got three videos and I've, I had one comment out of every single comment. And it was the guy basically saying, what a load of bollocks when you're using Valet Pro throughout the entire video. And I said, you clearly didn't listen to what I said. You don't understand the word partnership. Because <laughs> I have to react, John. I can't help it. I can't take it lying down, for God's <laughs> sake. I'm 51 years old. I'm very, very, very grouchy. <laughs> and uh, he, he didn't reply, obviously. But that, that that is a masterclass, yeah. Um, so away from, I have to ask you this, because I, I, I normally ask most of our guests this, away from your main gig which is detailing i know you you're uh, a musician um what's your well, main steady on i don't know you're pretty good um what's your main gig is it track days now is it just cars in general shows well i'm a, few, I'm a full time in buckets hootuber so that's how i make my living now um track days are how i stay sane so i get a buzz about taking my car down to the track and just hammering it round as hard as I can <laughs> till the wheels fall off. And then, and then you look at the car covered in you know rubber and things from yeah. the the track, and you see there's content right there. Well, they're, they're kind of <laughs> that easy, makes it actually. easy, doesn't it? No one's interested <laughs> in track content. Like I just put it up there because I'm interested, you know. Um, but generally, but people, it's funny. I could, I went to did a video, uh, do a track day, and the car was covered in bug splatter. And I had my, I got back in. I thought I can't leave that bug splatter all over the car. So I grabbed my, grabbed my potato cam, phone thing, and um, just shot me cleaning it off the car. And it does like fifty thousand views and makes hundred and fifty quid or something, two hundred quid, and that paid for the track day. So go. the moral of this story Suck. is, if you go track day and get bugs on the front and film cleaning it, there you go. Uh, this is this is it. It's a there's it's an money economy in, in muck. itself. I've all said that. There's <laughs> money in muck. There's money in filth in all in all walks of life. Yeah, it does pay for things. Um, doesn't really work that way with the metro though, Specky, because mm -hmm. you can't build up no. enough speed to actually kill a fly. That's the main problem. Exactly. You know? No, no, no. The it rust can't takes barely hold. overtake. A, it can barely <laughs> all overtake right, all local, right. Uh, you know, what are they called? The mobility scooters again? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> talking about the community again for a, for a moment there, so you, you touched on the, the Patreon side of things, and um, we've, we've been asked to start a Patreon if we should be doing this because there are people. Did you start that? Was was that a suggestion from someone else? Did you start it yourself because you thought you could you could add some value to some of the more, you know, I don't want to call them fanatical, but more dedicated fans. What was what was the kind of I went into you know, the, the uh, whole ethos? Yeah, I went into Patreon with no idea of what to expect. I just knew there was all these crowd funding apps, and Patreon seemed to one that all the YouTubers were using. And I just thought, right, let's start it up. And it took like two minutes to create the Patreon page and put a little yeah. banner, you know, download a little banner, a bit like creating a YouTube profile. And then bang, it's, it's created. And then I thought, it sat there for about a week, and I didn't even mention it on my channel that there was a patron. And someone joined. <laughs> God knows how they wow. found it. Um, a guy joined. And um, so I was messaging him in patron and chatting to him. And I said, how did you find this? And he said, I just found Forensic Detailing patron. I watched your channel. So I thought I'd join. I thought, you know what? I should 
publish this and stick it on the end card and tell people to Push join it. Patreon in the video and see what happens. Um, yeah. And it was really good for the first two years of me doing it. Um, and the people, the coolest thing about Patreon is I know some of my patrons and I meet them um, and I chat to them and, and I, I log on to Patreon every day and there's probably about 20 people that I speak to nearly on a daily basis and uh, you know I consider them friends and they've been in the videos as well I, um, so from that point of view it's amazing and I'd say to any YouTuber you should definitely have a Patreon page and you should just definitely put a link to it in your description and mention it and see what happens um, it is right, tough though, it. at the moment we're, go we're gonna do it <laughs> yeah I would just do it the but, Speck and Paul Patreon page is coming soon. <laughs> yeah, because there's no effort. Um, the problem, if it fails, it fails. But you haven't. It hasn't cost you anything. No, and you haven't lost anything. You haven't it? had to no. really do loads. You don't have to make patron specific content. Um, but it yeah. is not easy to grow the patron. You know, people that join are, are genuinely pretty cool people that are a very very small minority of the population that really like the channel enough to say you know what i want to be part of this and i'll pay you um whatever the tiering is i i've got i've still got yeah. the one dollar tiering because i thought that would be a really good way to make it sort of attractive to people um but the downside is that doesn't make much revenue which is the point of patreon but i don't know i would just do it guys because you'll make friends and also, the coolest thing about Patreon is using them to get a steer on what products they want featured, you know, yeah. what brands are hot, and what sort of videos they want, and what they think of the video, so you can give them previews and ask for feedback. Um, so I find that really useful as well. Yeah, it's a very, we, we very cool this. thing. Yeah, we did. Didn't yeah, we? we we like the idea of it. We've we've looked into it we, only because we were asked. We had some people saying, "Look, I'd, I'd love another way to be able to support you." Um, we had one chap contact us and said, um, "I used to support a couple of other um, content creators on their Patreon, but I've decided uh, to stop supporting them, and now I've basically got a bit of spare funds here, and I'd like to go and support some other content creators that I really like. I love what you guys do. Can is there a way we can do this?" And, and I talked to Paul about this, and I guess the, the, the main drawback is, or the, the most difficult thing is that I have to do all the work, and Paul just has to sit there and sound lovely. That's that's his job. So <laughs> I don't think you realise how all... hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> Years of practice. I really don't. I really don't actually know. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, you've got your, your different tiers so that, you, as you said, you can let your patrons um, hear... Uh, or watch content early and my drawback is if we're doing the podcast for example i'm the one that's doing everything and i'm struggling to get it, it out on time let alone it, it's a struggle to do that before i even think about letting other people hear it first as a kind of yeah, early you don't access have to have that situation tearing, just I, do that. yeah well this is what we looked into is all the different options of things that we can do and i just yeah we we perhaps don't see our own value lots of people have said they want us to do this and you know we we look at it and go really do you i think you should try it <laughs> um i think it's, it's possibly worth a try but you your patreon as you said you you've you've built up quite a lot of people you've got a select bunch of people which are obviously really good supporters there and people that you can bounce off of how much has that steered your content through your time on YouTube? a lot yeah for example i'm yeah. gearing up to do two more best ofs right now one on citrus washes one on glass sealants the lineups for those products are taken from my patrons uh, I, i've right. got a the post there i say right we're doing this tell me what are the iconic products because i want that list of products that are in there to be the best ones um and they those guys are closer their ears are to the ground and the scene and they know what's going on so yeah mm. i don't always pick everything that people recommend in the patron thing but I, it gives me ideas you know um, there's some yeah. really clever guys um one of my patrons tosh i don't know if he's listening but he's brilliant like he's no, he knows more about all the product stuff than i do um 
so you can also you can also borrow information off them. Yeah. Well, this is it. I mean, I found that, you know, when it comes to social medias and things like that, we all have our own little communities and so on. And for Paul and I, it's always been Instagram has been our community. Yeah. Um, and although you are on Instagram, you're not a prolific poster of content. You're not a, a prolific interactor there. No. Um, would you say that, that Patreon has become your kind of de facto use of I don't your, understand your community Instagram. situation? I, I think it's great. <laughs> I, I use Instagram when I'm sort of bored and I'm sitting in a coffee shop. I fire it up and I look at it and I really enjoy it. Or well, the pictures, I hate yeah. The reels are terrible. Um, but I don't understand how it works. If you look at my posts, I don't even bother hashtagging them half the time. Um, but I just desperately have a go at putting some content on there and hope it might yeah. do something. <laughs> but it never does. My wife doesn't understand it either. She doesn't get it. She just, she, I got her to start. Well, she started a page because my youngest son goes away traveling this year. He's, gonna, he's 23 and he's, he's leaving the nest. Bless him. Um, and she said, I want to go on Instagram so I can follow his story. So basically you hold a button and you can record short clips and you can just post where you are and all that sort of stuff. So he's off to Vietnam at the end of the year. So I set this channel up, uh, mm-hmm. this page up, sorry, sorry for her. And... Um, uh, really hard to find a name, Samantha um, Dolden Details. Obviously, it's a really difficult name. Um, I don't know where I got that from. And um, I put some pictures up on there, and then she instantly got a lot of followers. And she said, well, who are these people? I said, well, they're people that are going to support you. Well, I don't know them, though. I said, no, but you also don't know people on Facebook. Well, I do. I know all of them. I said, so you know everybody on Facebook, personally. She doesn't get the whole social media. She just thinks these people that... You know, we don't, if it wasn't for social media, me and Specky would never have become friends. You know, it links yeah, people. True. And I and I think this brings you on to the next question: the, the detailing community. How I know it's really, really important for me and Specky, and I know it is for a lot of people. How important do you feel the community is for the future of detailing? Because I I think it's based on people. Personally, I think the well, more I don't people know where the community is. This, um, where is it? Well, it, it exists wherever it is you go to yeah. interact with people yeah. at the end of the day. So if it's your YouTube comments or it's a Facebook page or it's an Instagram community of followers um, based on the, the followers that you have, the followers of the content that mm. you consume. So if you're following other detailers, other brands, other enthusiasts i think it's, just, it's spread throughout the uk john to be honest with you and it's yeah and i mean yeah. if i when i look at my youtube and it says who other people watch you're on the top it says other people watch forensic detail other people watch whoever you know specky that bloke over there um <laughs> I love how you had to think really hard for that one <laughs> yeah I've just moved you up um, just moved you up a couple of places <laughs> what was what was the first question around the community um the future do you think it's, yes. do you think they play a big part in it, the people around us, or do you think it's just purely just social media driven? Because I get like you, I get a lot from back from people. You get it from your Patreon. I get it through Instagram, through DMs, through brands. I talk to people via Instagram, and for yeah. us, it's really important. So, to, we were going to talk about. We are going to base. A, we're going to have a podcast about this, about how to keep that passion burning. So. In your view, the people around you, how important are they to you in regarding the future of detailing? Because I, well, as we said, it's it's kind of flatlining at the moment, isn't it? It needs to be. It really is quite noted. flat. Yeah, it's really flat at the moment. What I like is when you've been doing YouTube a long time, you want positive comments. You want co- positive people. So when you're doing content, you want when you get nice comments, you want to kind of engage, and when you get the same kind of rubbish comments you just you've heard them a million times and you just sort of then you 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 move away from your comments a bit more because you don't get any enjoyment out of looking at it so it's really important that people stay positive i think you're you you the people that watch your channel and comment um so that's important for a youtuber and then you can you'll stay interested in talking to people but i think there's a limit as well because when you're doing social media you cannot you've got to give yourself a break from it like in terms of how much time you are spending reading comments um and engaging with 
the people that are interested in detailing because you can't be doing it all the time you've got to get away from it so it's a balancing act and for me the channel has there's enough people commenting to sort of feel my need to have a conversation about detailing with people and with patron whereas before i had a channel i was a member of all of like the um you know like the detailing addicts um thing and I, or i'd read posts on detailing world or i'd be on detailing central and stuff like that but when you do youtube after a while you can't be on those places because you just get torn you get torn a new you know what you know <laughs> i remember you it's saying true, that actually. you said that when you you know graciously said my name in your channel you so it takes guts to, to you put yourself out there and i think that's what a lot of people get scared of and I, we've we've come across if there is a toxic element to detailing i don't know if you've ever come across this but especially within social media and some of the comments you know you know you've heard all before on your channel is everyone's an expert they're always an armchair expert you've you know wouldn't have done it like that and i always say the same thing to people i said well send me a link to your channel and show me how you do it and they just go quiet and i think that's a real really? shame because the biggest thing for me is to get people into this hobby which is a massive part of my life and has become a huge part of my life and i i didn't start youtube until i was 45 so i'm i'm a late cl uh, comer and but it's the best thing i've ever done especially for for my mental health as well and mm. i think there's a lot to oh, be said yeah. for that but it's, it's brilliant uh, isn't it? do, you, do you, yeah do, do you still enjoy not putting the camera on and just cleaning your car just for the hell of it because i know i do i love it sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. that's an honest answer that's very honest <laughs> you know i haven't for i haven't for a couple of months but when when spring comes and like sometimes it's nice to get out there and just turn the cameras off and just detail your car um and i used to love doing it before i had the channel i used to love it um and you know i built my garage you know the inside of it and then started doing the channel and then it became like when i was doing something on my car it was always to make a video and that changes it a little bit um because you forget to enjoy it because you're trying definitely. to film it Yep. so i've overdosed on detailing f for sure but so sometimes i don't love it and sometimes i do <laughs> yeah that's incredibly honest I, I think i feel exactly the same there are times when i've i've just become so sick of it and i just i have actually considered just taking the car to the car wash just because i just i know it needs to be cleaned but i'm just done with it for now you know you, you can't overload but you know there's times when you want to you do want to get out there you uh you you get your bits and pieces together you get your headphones on you a little bit listen to a little bit of uh jd's folk and blues sure, and uh yeah, just <laughs> greatest hits yeah. yeah if anyone doesn't know this is i'm talking about john's musical that was my first channel Paul, that, Paul that's been it. stuck at like the same subscriber number for the past 10 years i think <laughs> you still dabble in the guitar you still play for your, your own little bit of enjoyment i do mate i'm like the uh kind of 40s version of des o'connor <laughs> love it i used to play guitar i was on electric and i had an acoustic and i gave up years you never told me this sore subject i'll explain it another day when we've had a few sherbets it's a sad sad yeah because i used to be in a band i used to play guitar as well i'm surprised we've never actually talked about this. Oh, it's all coming out now here we go hidden pasts oh uh, here we go <laughs> um a couple of quick fire questions if you don't mind john just as we kind of get ready to wrap this episode up um your dream car to detail uh e34 m5 oh good choice Ooh. good choice sir nice that choice. plays my son yeah I absolutely love i want to um, get one one day okay your favorite or ideal detailer to work with for a day oh that's a tough one that is <laughs> me. it's me it's me well no i <laughs> you said detailer not valeter i would like to um I, it wouldn't be you two because <laughs> i feel like of i know it you. wouldn't i'd like to go over to america and probably um detail a car with matt from obsessed garage because i used to watch him before i had a channel and one day i will get over there hopefully and uh, 
Ah. You know, do that. But um, yeah, so let's go with Matt from Obsessed Garage. Okay, one detailing product you've never ever been able to get your hands on but really want. Ooh. Um, ooh. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, like. You got I, him. You got I him. really wanted, Ooh. when I was doing my wax making, to have a collection of all of the true ceramic waxes. And there was like five of them. It's like the Rings of Power from Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> and one of them was the um, Kamikaze one. I can't even remember what it's called. But it had true ceramic in it. Um, so I, that's the one that I wasn't able to get. They're all just going to sit in a display case on the... Yeah, the I'd never garage. use them. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question. Um, will you be going to wax stock next year? Cause it's a t- I was going to ask that one. Good question. Yeah, 10th uh, anniversary. Probably It'd be great not. to see you there. I, oh, I come on. What? Like I just... That's not, what not I mean into by kind the of um, All that sort of stuff. And I'm not a very social person. And it's like four hours up there, four hours back down... And, so I uh, get a hotel. So we did. Well, I could do. Yeah, I <laughs> never on. say never. Boo hoo! Bognor Regis is half the distance of Aberdeenshire. Thank you very much. I'm three hours. Yeah, well, maybe I will. You know, it's. Um, you should do, John. You'd. you'd I want to do wax stock and seamer at some point in my life. So I will get up there at yeah. some point. Tenth anniversary. Make it happen. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is stand next to Paul because nobody will look at you when you're next to Paul because as far as anyone else is concerned you're only about two foot tall yeah. when you're next to Paul because I know I've been there I've I still it. think we should make a video John we said it ages ago I was oh, going to come God, down to yeah. Bogner oh yeah I'd watch it yeah I'd we'll, watch it boys we'll do it let's make it happen you know what I'm like Paul I'm terrible with getting this stuff organised but yeah I'd love to do something well, let's like not that. talk about how much work we had to go through to get this set up <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm I'm terrible aren't I but um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you made it. If you, you get made it, that's all that these matters. things you remember, like I'll remember this podcast. And you remember the kind of times you meet people when you do things that are a little bit different outside your comfort zone. Um they're always yeah. good, but it's just getting myself over the line to actually do it, you know. Well, we're delighted that you managed to come along because like I said, highly, highly requested. Um well, I, I, so I, I I had hand in that. I paid all the people. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the Patreon money went. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for taking the time to come and uh, join us tonight. It's been absolutely fantastic to have you along, and um, we would love to have you again at some point, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you never know. If you do end up at Waxstock next year, Paul and I will most likely be recording another live podcast from the show floor. So if we see you around don't worry we will shove a microphone right in your face and put you on the spot because we know you love it I'm glad you said face <laughs> yeah it's usually paul that says the other thing yeah don't worry about it um but folks at home if you have enjoyed listening to this episode of the podcast please do let us know we uh, hope you've enjoyed this it's been something a bit different john thank you very much again thank you john thank yeah, you it's and been fantastic great to chat guys awesome it's been amazing um we hope you guys enjoyed this we will catch you in the next episode in the meantime i've been specky i've been paul and uh, i've been john hey, <laughs> it doesn't have the same <laughs> ring we'll catch you guys in the next episode take care bye